cybersecurity today and how safe people's passwords are. What is one of your online passwords currently? It is my dog's name and the year I graduated from high school. Oh, what kind of dog do you have? I have a Chihuahua Papillon. And what's its name? Jameson. Jameson. And where did you go to school? Um, I went to school back in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. What school? Uh, Hempfield Area Senior High School. Oh, when did you graduate? In 2009. Oh, great. <laughs> it's like my cat's name and then just like a random number. Okay. Has you had this cat for a while? Yeah, she's my childhood pet. Aw. And what's her name? Her name is Jolie. Jolie. Mm -hmm. So like a password of yours would be Jolie and then a number. Yeah. Like number one? Uh, like my birthday. Oh, when is your birthday? Uh, June 12th. Oh, nice. And what year were you born? Uh, 95. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So Jolie, 6, 12, Nine. 95. Yes. Got it. Gemma, 1, 2, 3. Spell G-E-M-M-A. Well, most of them are Italian. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So like, like, what's a good Italian password? Uh, my grandma's name. Oh, what's your grandma's uh, name? Uh, Maria. Maria. So Maria is your password? Oh yeah, now you know my password. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's it. I hope you 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 like the our small sample of the social engineering techniques which could be used. So what we would like to do today, what is our mission today? We would like to show you the risk rated not only for the passwords but for specific group of accounts in your environment, which are the privileged accounts widely seen privileged accounts. So the key is today not to talk about any product, but about the risk, show you some samples of attacks using privileged accounts, and then talk about how to protect this very important point, which are privileged accounts. Because the truth is that if you are not protecting privileged accounts, you, you can have many security liars. We, can, we are talking today and yesterday about different technologies, different techniques, but the truth, they, they are very important. But if you do not protect privileged accounts, even of these security systems, hacker can potentially jump into your system, into your, for example, my administrator laptop. From this laptop, go to the security system, take a look, create the backdoors, or see the infrastructure, topology, etc., and get into it. So this is the, the plan to protect your keys to your IT kingdom, basically, which are the privileged accounts. My name is Bartek Krenski. I'm Precise engineer in CyberArk. My name is uh, Achi Benevin. I'm running the Precise team in CyberArk. So, um, <coughs> actually, this, this movie is, is funny, we know, but if you're thinking that um, it's so difficult to store your password and credentials in your IT environment, so, so you're wrong. So, we saw how it's easy in this movie to store in the street um, people password. But actually, it's pretty the same when we are talking about your organization, networks, and IT environments. And that's why we are going to talk today about these privileged credentials and why they are so risky and how we should protect. Um, the, the attacker are looking for those credentials. That's why they need. That's what they want to, because they want to create damage to your organization. They want to store information. Uh, and the, um, if you think of the weak point, usually it will be us, the human. We are using default passwords. We are using um, easy passwords just that can we remember them. We are not rotating our password. We want our life easier, and that makes the attacker life easier. So <laughs> let's take a look on the basic life cycle of the attack. And it doesn't matter if it's starting from outside the organization or inside the organization. Finally, the attacker will, be, will become internally. And today we assume that if someone wants to breach your organization, he will find a way to get inside. And after that, the, the next stage is to move laterally in the, move, in, the, in the network by escalating the privilege time after time. And guess what? Privilege are everywhere. There is tons of privilege accounts in your organization. And there are some studies that are talking about three times or four times privilege compared to employees in, in, the, in the companies. And if you look like on some examples, so there is the default privilege like domain admins, local admins, but there is shared accounts like database. We have just a story um, before of storing information from the database from, with admin users. Um, 
We have technical um, web, ser web services, IIS, uh, task schedules, even in the cloud, DevOps, CI, CD tools, um, business application, every, every component in infrastructure coming with default admin uh, user. So the potential is huge, and eventually the attacker will get to his target by taking those credentials. Yeah, so how, how hacker, how, well, I, I can skip here, how intruder, how hacker can potentially go into the environment? It doesn't matter if it's external threat or internal. So if we are external threat, so first, the weakest chain usually is human, right? So we, we saw it on the movie. So we can use some phishing campaign, some fish, spear phishing, for example, campaign. We can check the LinkedIn and see who is the administrator, database administrator in the environment, for example. During the last years, I've been running many security audits, but also phishing campaigns in huge environments. And what we saw is usually something like 50 to 70% people got caught by properly prepared phishing, uh, spear phishing or phishing, even just the phishing emails sent to, to people. In many cases, it was not only clicking the link or something like that, but also downloading as the second phase, downloading even .exe file. I'm not talking even about the doc or PDF pr 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 properly prepared, but also .exe file, which should be quite strange, yeah? Why there is an .exe with some um, gifts, for example, for the Christmas gift. But usually people are running it. We could easily establish back the connection with some reverse TCP shell, for example, metaprater or something like that, and go further. So what then if I have an access to this station because of the phishing and connection back to my CNC server, so in the next phase what I could do, I could just take a look for the credentials. It's not the station which is interesting for me. I would like to use this station as it's internal and jump, do the lateral movement for the stations and for the servers. What techniques could be used? Of course, some SSH keys, some passwords, but also, for example, hashes. If I would be the local administrator, I could jump into LSASS, for example, the memory, and check, for example, a list of hashes of other users. So if we have the hash, so if hacker has the hash, he can try to decrypt it, but it takes some time and it's quite difficult. So we do not need to wait. We can use tools like Minicats, for example, uh, and do the pass the hash, for example, technique, to another system, another station and maybe on this other station by using again pass the hash or other technique we can go to the server level and we can see three scenarios here scenario a for me as a hacker quite difficult because there are different passwords for different users on the stations it makes for me the life a little bit more difficult but usually on the station there can be some local accounts which have the same password for example my station was prepared by the golden image and there is some default admin user with default password. So then I could use the same password and jump to another systems. Third one, which is very common, of course, because it's very um, elastic, is domain accounts. So I can take the account of help desk, for example, or some IT guys, or even domain admin, and I'm having the hash, and I can do easily the lateral movement. That's one of the, one of the nice samples. And if we have the domain admin account, of course, we have an access to many systems, but also what we can try to do very easily, and I will show you that in the demo of the attack soon, we can try to fetch the domain controller with some attacks like, for example, Golden Ticket, which is great because if we have the hash only of the user called TGT, so this is the master user of KDC, so Key Distribution Center, so what we can do, we can generate the Golden Ticket, ticket to everything in your domain, which will be valid for 10 years, and I will impersonate it to some name, like Bugs Bunny or something else, which is not in the domain. And it's totally transparent. And we can do it whatever you want in the domain. Domain is fully compromised. So during the, during the meetings, usually we, we see the answer from customers. Yeah, we have antivirus. We have anti-malware, anti-something on the station. So usually such tools like Mimikas will be blocked. Yeah, as the application, we have whitelisting of the applications, great. But there are so many methods of bypassing the security conventional systems like antivirus, anti -malware, like using, for example, authorized PowerShell. If I have the PowerShell, what I can put, I can download the, the code itself to the memory, put it to the variable, and just execute it, invoke. And do the same, just list the hashes from the memory. And then there is nothing to do with for antivirus for many of them. So there are many techniques of 
skipping such, let's say, conventional ideas like signatures based solutions. So, um, as Martin mentioned, the, the attacker wants to go from the stations to the to the server and go into the network until um, he will compromise the, the DC by golden ticket. And um, even Microsoft published this two model. Um, and what does it mean? It means that there is three tiers that we are um, splitting our network. Tier two is the endpoint, tier one is the servers, and tier zero is the domain control and critical assets. And actually, what the attacker is looking is to move between those tiers and jumping um, when he's starting with phishing mail or, or any other technique from the endpoint. Then he will look for a gateway account that gives him the access to the first server, then move in the server tier until he will get the access to the uh, DC or any other critical server in tier zero. So, and, and this after he will find the first gateway account, can take even a few minutes until your network will be compromised by a golden ticket, and for that you will need to rebuild your Active Directory um, from scratch. Great, so let's run some short demo now. So just before we, we play it, we'll present you just several phases of attack, the potential attack. We'll make it simple, so it will be optimized because of the time we have today. So usually it would take a little bit more time just to go to the station, jump between the station, find some credentials, go to server level, go to domain level. But let's make it simple, but show you the sample how easily potentially we could get into your environment and compromise your critical elements of the infrastructure. It could be database, it could be shares, it could be some transaction system. We should, let's focus on DC as one of the, one of the examples. So let's, I would like to introduce to you Kali as the distribution of the Linux with some nice security tools. And I, I, we have used the Empire, Empire uh, PowerShell attacking framework. It could be Metasploit, it could be Empire, whatever, right? We're just running it. There is no agents now, so we do not have any connections from, from our potential victims. And now let's switch for the moment to some windows. We have Ashley. She's our friend. She's working in the company. And yeah, she, she's working usually, but from time, from time to time, she's just taking a look into her emails. And she figured out once when logging to the Gmail that there is some email from RSA registration of some conference. And after the conference, there is some strange invoice. This is just the doc, the world doc. She's opening, yeah, what can be wrong in the doc file? Yeah, usually nothing. But if she opens it, it's even in the protected view now. So it should be quite safe. But in this protected view, we run the macro, which is communicating through the PowerShell to the back, uh, getting back to my CNC system. In the server itself, we see the IP address of, of Ashley, what is the operating system in it, what kind of users do we have, all information about, about operating system. And we will use some modules of, of, the, um, of, the, of, the, of the environment uh, it can be reconnaissance, it can be enabling keylogger, it can be lateral movement, etc. We will just use an example of mentioned previously Mimikatz. So let's use the Mimikatz and list what is going on in the environment, list hashes. So we have all of the information from the memory about users, about the hashes. So we see here, for example, hash of Ashley herself and nothing more interesting for the moment. So let's make it more simple using creds. We have just two hashes, one is about the system and the second one about Ashley. Yeah, but we do not need to have the password of Ashley because we are already there. So what we can do now, we can try to convince some other users like IT help desk, <coughs> send some email to them that, yeah, we need help. Just connect to my environment, we need help. Yeah, we'd like to troubleshoot something. So IT guy is connecting remotely to the <coughs> operating system of, of Ashley. After authentication, what is the new thing in the memory? It's hash of the sysadmin user. As I mentioned, we made it simple. So sysadmin user in my environment is the domain admin. Usually it would be some admin of some group, but this is the next step we would like to explain later on. So now when we list hashes again, sometimes it's hashes, sometimes it's even clear text of passwords. So we have the hash of sysadmin in that time. So for my environment, it's, very, it's, it's the game over account, basically, right? <clears throat> we are going to use. So we can just easily use it with the pass the hash technique and go somewhere else. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use this account 
<coughs> and going to the DC itself. So first of all, I will use the DC sync just to fetch the, not the credential itself, but the hash of the user kerb TGT. As I mentioned, it's the master user of a key distribution center, and it could be used as, actually, it's the only one critical point to get, generate the golden ticket, the, this game over attack golden ticket in the DC. So what I listed, I just listed the hash to so use DC sync and define that kerb TGT should be the one I'm interested in. I took off the hash. So now I will have the NTLM hash of the kerb TGT user. And by using this hash, I can just generate the golden ticket. So define what user I would like to be impersonated to. So like the Bugs B or anyone, even not in the domain. Then uh, what is the seed of the domain? What is the name of the domain? Use uh, hash of the kerb TGT user. And I can just generate the ticket. I can define what is the validity of the ticket. It can be 10 years, whatever. And I just generate the golden ticket. It's because of the architecture of the Kerberos, basically. It's nothing like the small bug, etc. It's just the structure. It's how it's working. It's great. It's elastic, etc. But from the security perspective, I would say it's not the best one. Yeah? That's why when I run it now, I can do whatever I want. Yeah? I have the ticket in the Kerberos. I can just ask for the service ticket, like for the shares, etc., for the KDC. Everything based on the Kerberos I can reach now. And the, what is important here is totally transparent. If you have all this, let's say, common security environment, it's totally transparent for them. Yeah, I can easily, transparently do the lateral movement in the environment. What are the key findings? As I mentioned, it was, we wanted to make it simple, right? It was just several steps. But usually, someone will say, yeah, who is using the domain admins for help desk? There are, believe me, there are some. We have many projects nowadays. We close the projects or are discussing with customers. And there are many situations when users are using, it's one of the bad practices here, nominal accounts, like named accounts for, for example, domain administrators. So for my station, I can go with the domain admin. And this is very risky because if someone compromised my station, he can jump directly. Even if not, we can just do several steps mentioned before. So here are several bad practices you saw in the movie, like first of all, using the local admin account. Why we need to use them? Even if someone says, yeah, but usually in my environment, users are not using local accounts, local admin accounts. Yeah, but there are some situations you need to put the password, and that's it for me. For hacker, only one guy is needed to, to, to list the hashes, for example. And it can be developer is a good idea, because they always say that they need to have the admin accounts, run PowerShell as an admin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there is a, several samples of the bad practices. Also, Microsoft is telling that because domains could be built something like 10 years ago, you should think like hacker, you should think like the domain was already compromised. Start thinking like intruder and start thinking like there is an attack or there was an attack. So imagine that in your environment there is some silent guy with a golden ticket. What you can do with it, yeah? How you can fix it, rebuild the domain? Maybe it's not the best idea. So I guess you're asking yourself what, what to do now. We saw the risk, we talked about it, and um, we saw that how easy it is to store password even from people or even from the IT environment. And it makes sense that in any advanced attack, there are privilege involved in. So what customers are doing, they are building a privilege program to make sure they are prioritizing this issue and handling that um, because that's what should be done we should handle the privilege accounts in the first priority in the security plans. And, uh, and you know, the question is how to do it and, and how to start. So, so we're here to help you with, with that. Cyberarch actually um, built this hygiene program based on our experience. Cyberarch was established 18 years ago. And we have a lot of um, customers experience in the field. And in the last few years, we are assisting customer after the breach. If you heard about Andam in the US or Sony, I guess that you heard about this, those breaches. So we were there. We were there to help them recover from those breaches. We're sitting together with the security and IT guys in the same room. Um, and based on that, we published this, this program. Um, cooperate with some other security company and consulting company. And uh, those, this is the seven steps that we are going to talk a little bit more deeply now. And I must say that you can take those steps and change it if, if you want or, or need. But let's agree on something. Let's start from one of those. Let's start from something 
that's related to privilege account. Don't leave this privilege outside in your network without control them, without protect them, and without secure them. Um, and if you think that there is one step that it's more important to your environment than the other, so okay, it's, it's fine, but, but let's start. So we are going to talk on each step on the attacker mindset, and we need to start to, to think like an attacker. We need to think how the attacker thinking to know how to protect ourselves, and not think like a defender as we did till today. So the first step is the attacker wants to get over on your network, take over on your network, golden ticket as, as we mentioned, and and that, that is the first goal for, for each hacker that wants to t attack your organization. And mostly, um, the, the current state for most of the organization, they are not using any multi-factor authentication. Actually, they are using sing single factor authentication for the main admins and critical privilege accounts. And the hashes, as we saw how easy it is to sell them, are spread into the network, and we can, and the attacker can steal them from the endpoint, from the server, whatever it is, they are, they are there. And you don't need to know actually the password, just take the hash and move laterally in the movement. And um, so, so what we should do for, for protecting ourselves, so, so the word for me is, is isolation. We need that um, tier zero that we talk about, the critical assets will be isolated from the other uh, tiers. We need to control the privilege. We need to understand that each privilege credentials that are used to get access to the um, critical assets, they're only in, uh, in the same tier, and there is no access, for example, from the endpoint to the DC. It doesn't make sense, because then the hash will be still on the endpoint, and game over will be, will be very fast. Um, so isolation is very important. Um, Multi-factor authentication, highly recommended for when you're using this kind of uh, uh, highly uh, risk uh, privilege. And, um, and this is the first step that you need to do. Yes, so <clears throat> one thing to be mentioned, if we are talking about the isolation, isolation, it should be something like just the jump server. Uh, the user is just getting remotely by the RDP to the jump server, logging in, and go then to the tier one or tier zero. Because this is just the next step for me as a, a hacker, to, to the hash. Take the hash, go past the hash, and jump again. We need to do it more securely, in the more secure way. Maybe I shouldn't know, as operator, as administrator, I shouldn't even know the password of my sysadmin. You remember this guy, the, the, the domain admin. I shouldn't know about it. Maybe it should be even automatically changed <clears throat> when I just establish the connection to the DC. So after the authentication, it should be immediately changed by, by pass, by privilege check on security module, just to make it even more safe. <clears throat> so during the, the video, during the recording, you saw the example of domain admin yeah, used for the, for the bridge, basically, because then we could put, use some nice bridge of the data, for example, in your environment. But the next step, is to use the known, let's say, static accounts, <laughs> like built-in accounts, like local admins, roots, enable, sysdba system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Default admins of next generation firewall, web application firewall, other security systems, business applications, etc. Because <clears throat> they are as risky as this domain, for example, domain admin account we, we have already mentioned. So what we should do, what we should start thinking about, is how to protect these accounts. Yeah, the, the building accounts, which are the very privileged accounts in the environment, like, like root, etc. So what we should do, we should manage them properly and protect them. I mean, define the policy, who have an access to specific accounts or specific group of accounts, when, in what scenarios, if they can just copy the temporary password and go directly to the terminal, or they should be isolated. So they need to authenticate into, the, let's say, this proxy with multi-factor authentication, and then in this proxy, there will be put credentials and establish the next connection with something like RDP, SSH, browser, whatever, to your monitored and protected environment. I mentioned it's, it's not easy program. Privilege account security is not easy program. It's a process, long-term process. But we have to do it, because without it, the risk is really high. And everyone already started or is planning to do something with the privileged accounts because they are in every attack, during every attack, sooner or later. And we should go in this direction to address 100% of these accounts, to evolve them, 
to store them in the secure location, define the policy and put some management like rotation of, of passwords or even keys, generally secrets. Yeah. Uh, I know it's difficult to get into 100%, but we have to start. And the man, important point here is let's put some slides. So let's start with first group, like let's focus on networking devices, Cisco or anything else, some environment. Finish it, go further, go to databases, address default credentials of the databases, address uh, credentials hard-coded, for example, in the golden image of the, of the operating system, etc., etc. Put it into the next steps, reasonable steps, measured steps. This is the idea. Let's go to the third point. So the third, the third step is uh, the lateral movement that we saw, and it's happened in, in every attack. And uh, the attacker wants to steal the credentials to, to move on to the next, to the next stage. And um, he's doing that by that most of the organizations have some groups with local admin rights on the workstations. Maybe some of them are thinking now, no, I don't have any local admins in my organization, but Let's include all the groups. Let's include IT, let's include help desk, developers, maybe some in finance sector, some applications that require local admins. So for sure there are some people, employees in the organizations that have um, admins right on their workstations and we need to cut it off. We need to remove those uh, permissions and go with the least privilege principle. That means that all the uh, employees, all the users will have only the permissions that they need. We need to elevate the permissions to the admins right just when they need to run any activity or, or commands for doing the specific uh, uh, stuff they need to in their daily job and not give them the all permissions as being admin on the stations if it's not necessary. And most of the time it's not necessary. So we need to go to this direction. We must remove those uh, uh, rights for these uh, employees and make sure that they have only the specific rights. Yeah, so next step, we, we need to go further because of the, of the time. I think we have still at least 10 minutes from, 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 the, from the table. Uh, uh, so we have been talking during the video about the interactive logins, but the also critical problem are technical accounts, uh, application accounts, like accounts in the code of the application where the application is connected to the database or another application, in the files, in the scripts, and also specific accounts of the, for example, vulnerability scanners. It's a very nice example as, first of all, the vulnerability scanner of the environment is having the huge range of permissions of the privileges. Someone had to know the password of the vulnerability scanner because you need to put it into the scanner. So knows the password of it. Secondly, we can imagine, and we did it, we can go into the server and take this password from the memory, for example, and just use it. So we, we should also address this problem. And how we can do it? We can do it easily as we have 18 years of experience. We are 18 years in the market. We are market leader. So everyone from this field, like vulnerability scanners, like orchestration tools and other, want to integrate with us and are integrating with us. So it's very easy to address the problem of the passwords or credentials on the scanner, for example, <coughs> or other <coughs> such sorry, tools just by the checkbox. Do not use the static credentials, but connect to the vault and take the credentials from the vault. So you can easily rotate these this credentials and use it by the applications. And then we should address also in-house applications and application platforms. So we should cut off all hard-coded credentials from, from the code <coughs> and m take it, use more dynamic environment. How it's working? It, that there will be no, just to make it simple, there will be no hard-coded credentials and application will be able to connect to other applications in the environment. This is what we are doing in this, in this step. Um, let's move on to, to some other areas. We talked a lot about Windows environments, but there is lots of risk in, in other environments. So the, the first step is, um, is regarding Unix uh, machines with SSH keys. And we need to, to <coughs> protect the SSH keys exactly as we are protecting on the password. And usually we don't know what's going on in the Unix environment. We don't know where the pairs of the keys are. Usually there are too many keys, the attackers can you know, get access to specific um, Unix machine and then have access to all others because of the keys. No one is managing that. So we need to protect them. We need to store it and vault 
vaulting the SSH keys we need to rotate them uh, periodically and automatically and make sure that the Unix environment are protected as well as the Windows environment and not give the attacker any uh, access to a critical uh, uh, Unix machines. Next phase, we were talking about the technical accounts. Now we see the huge trend of moving to the DevOps methodology. Who of you know such names like Jenkins, Puppet, Chef, Ansible, Kubernetes, Dockers, containers, microservices, other stuff like that. Anyone who has started the, the, the process of moving to the methodology of, of uh, DevOps? So DevOps is not a group of tools. It's just the, the idea, the, the, the methodology of deploying and delivery of the applications. Very great because we are working together. Developers and operations are working together now. But the point is to put also security in this pipeline. And this is the very important point now. Because now, because of the list of all of these tools, there are plenty of machines. The main actor now is in the machine, not the user, not the human being. So there is the machine which is taking the code, putting it into the test environment, take it from the test environment, develop it, etc., etc. And all of these tools, and also microservices, containers need to have credentials, of course. So we cannot keep it as the exception from the security policy of the environment. We need to also address this point. And how we are doing it? The same idea. We are, they should ask first for the credentials. First of all, we need to authenticate the object. It's very difficult, but we are, we are doing it. Authenticate the new object, like the new microservice, new container, which is waking up. And then give him the proper credentials, dynamic credentials. In the test environment, different. Production environment, different. That's why we are <coughs> addressing such issues like during the breaches of uh, Uber or uh, Vivine or Ashley Madison, where there was a problem with GitHub sensitive data in the in the code, or the registry of the container was made mystically public, not the private API key for the cloud was mystically very easy to be taken and get into the to the cloud. We are also addressing it as the one of the phases of the of the program. This is the, the very important point, and nowadays it's very common. So you, even we are doing the, the separated pro projects from the pass on-prem, pass on the DevOps environments. And the last step is the <laughs> business application and the shared ID. So there are times that the attacker will just want to get into a network, get access to a specific application like finance application, angel application, legal application, and store your information. Um, so that's why we must uh, protect those accounts uh, as well. Um, and each application have an admin for this um, business application to give permissions to create user, to get access to the sensitive data. Actually, most of the time, the mostly sensitive data is is sitting in, in those kind of applications. Um, and this is the, the, the business for, for all of you. So we need to protect that and we need to make sure that they are, the access to those uh, applications are managed and, and we control who is accessing when and, uh, and what he is doing. Um, all those seven steps that we saw here, um, you know, we, if you want to think like an attacker, after you will be breached, you will doing that. So let's do it before the attack, not after. Um, Cyborg have the products to assist you with all of these steps. We just talked about the, the idea uh, till now. We didn't talk about our solutions or our product, but in every step, we can assist you and we can help you to protect yourself, to vault in the accounts, to rotate the passwords, to not expose the passwords to the employees, to isolate your environment, your environment um, to audit, to record, um, to block the uh, lateral movement by installing credentials from the endpoint and from the server. Everything that we talk about, we have uh, uh, the solution to system. So you can come after the presentation to, the, to our booth. Um, three principles that I want you to, to keep in mind. So first of all, you need to identify your problem in your organization to make sure that you know what is your current status and what you need to do. Then pick up you know, three, five data center and starting to change the password and isolate the uh, access for the critical assets in your environment, at, at least in the first stage. And, you know, privilege identity is your most valuable assets in the organization. Keep in mind all what we talk, that the attacker look for that. That's what he needs in every advanced attack. He needs that um, for which your organization. Yeah, so the truth is that you cannot protect your system if you do not know it. 
right? So what we should do, we should just take a look, what is the risk, where are we now, how we can start. So what you can easily do, even in the beginning, on yourself, it's not the product we are selling, etc., but it's the module you can download from, the, from our page, is DNA, which is the application which helps you to scan the environment. You're just downloading the application, not install, but just run it with, of course, the proper privileges. And we are doing full security audit of your environment. 